everyone, my name is John Clare, this is John's Dark Heart, and as always, you are very welcome. Now, today's piece I want to talk about is quite an old piece. I did this about five or six years ago, I believe. Uh, it's a piece I like to call Mythical Beasts. So, if I bring up a few here now, so you can have a look at it. Okay, got a good look? Excellent. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the walkthrough. I'm going to tell you more about how I created this piece, why I created it, and so on and so forth. And we're going to do that now. So, here we are. We're in Procreate now. And what we'll do as I usually want to do at this stage of the uh, proceedings. I'm going to go into camera's information. And uh, this piece was created on the 16th of April, 2018. So this is five and a half years old at this stage. So if we go into statistics, you can tell that this took me 30 hours nearly, 29, point, 29 hours and 28 minutes and Total Strikes made are 35,456. Quite an involved piece, took me a long time to do this one. So anyway, let's hop into Time Lapse Replay. And here we go. Now I'm gonna have to rotate here because initially when I started out, I think I was just going for, bear in mind, I did this five years ago, so my memory might be a little bit foggy on this, but judging by what I'm doing here is, like, this is based on actually the Irish elk, the Megaloceros, as it's scientifically known. It was a giant elk, it was basically a massive deer that didn't just live in Ireland, where it was first discovered, but throughout all of Northern Europe, from basically Ireland all the way throughout to Siberia. So this thing had a massive range at the time it was alive. And it had massive antlers. So what I essentially was doing here was initially, so I started roughing out its face, and then it's antlers, those massive sprawling antlers. And then I kind of reduced it back down again. So we'll punch in a good bit here now, we're gonna to have to. It, obviously at this stage, it seems like Procreate's kind of jumped ahead a little bit. So I will forgive you that. But I've already drawn out, roughed out the body here. I took my time kind of building it up. Cause you gotta bear in mind, I mean, this, this, I mean, this was an impressive animal. It's a huge animal when you think about it. About the size of a moose. We'll go into the, we'll punch into the face here and bear in mind it's quite pixelated because it's 1080p you may not get all this, the detail in terms of the strokes and everything else but i've drawn the face out but with the with the antlers i took a little bit of uh, creative liberties shall we say um because they don't actually look like that they're a lot more kind of flat than more like dishes so i kind of wanted to do something a little bit more interesting with them so once i kind of shored up the outlines I kind of like the idea of them looking like these like strange organic structures more, more than anything else. They're kind of more like tree branches or like tree bark than, you know, actual antlers that you would normally see on a deer. And I think there was a reason for it, if I recall. I think also, you notice it, you know, initially I was going with straight lines here and I thought it might be quite interesting to tie the knot a little bit. So I've really gone ham in terms of the creative license of you you know drawing these antlers well ham for me at least anyway and once i've kind of got them done again i mean you could probably tell because like this is one of the relatively older pieces my style in a lot of ways hasn't changed all that much in fairness to me like i, I, I am pretty proficient at what i do so the entire look of the animal is pretty convincing. I think, you know, I'm gonna give myself a bit of a pat on the back here. I think this actually looks pretty good. You know, it's a big imposing animal, which I kind of undermine a little bit later on, as you can tell. So here we are, look, there's another sort of, this is a self portrait of, well, myself, obviously. And what I wanted to do with this, from what I recall, because I remember, there was an artist that I worked with going back a few years ago. Um, we were doing shows together and his name was Matthew Vieira. And he did these paintings about how people look at their phones. And this is going back 10 years ago. So you can imagine like not much has changed in that period. But he, he did a lot of paintings that were basically people looking at their phones. It was kind of to show how 
people are you know distracted by these by these things and how you know how they don't take in the world around them the the world that they perceive is the world on that this tiny black screen you know so i wanted to kind of do my own variation on that so if you're spending so much time looking at your phone you're not taking in the world around you and how amazing it can be so what i did was i did this incredibly detailed self-portrait of myself and there are certain features that are exaggerated definitely the eyes are exaggerated but that's kind of almost a natural um that's basically because because of refraction with the glasses that i wear because i'm very short-sighted it makes my eyes look small almost than they actually are so if i take my glasses off you may notice it you may not i don't know but my eyes actually in terms of from your perspective my eyes actually reduce in size but with this i did kind of the opposite i spent a long time doing this actually i used to remember because this is about the time i first moved to ireland uh, within the first year of me doing so and what i used to spend a lot of time doing before i get to know before i got to know people in the area was sit down in a cafe or in a pub that's how i first met roman and a lot of the people i know in this area and this used to what basically this is what i used to while away my time doing sitting down in a pub maybe with a pint of guinness maybe with a coffee and just draw and i spent so using this self-portrait the idea was essentially and as you can tell you can also tell the age of this because that's an iphone 6 in my hands i have this saying if you've got the time take the time you know so I had the time on my hands at that point. So I took my time in doing this piece. Even the details on the collar there, just like little things like that, that I feel makes the difference. It's been a long time since I've actually done any self portraits or anything of the like, but it may be something I revisit, I don't know. But with this drawing, like it essentially what, it, to my mind at least, what it's about is you know, not taking in the world around you, like basically spending all your time looking at your phone and not appreciating what's going on, the, the amazing things that you miss out on, when, you know, your, your attention is diverted by these little black mirrors that we carry around in our pocket. So anyway, that's the piece, that's it done. And I think now's the time we round this out. So let's do that now. Okay, so that was Mythical Beasts. Um, it's a piece that, considering how long ago I did it, I'm actually pretty pleased with it. If I was going to make some criticisms, I would say the composition isn't the greatest, but the actual technical drawing itself, you know, I think it's pretty good. And I, th I think it still holds up even now. As you can probably tell at the time, my beard was a bit shorter and without so many flecks of grey in it. But, you know, I still think it works out as a drawing in, in, in of itself. And I like what I did with the, the, um, the antlers because, you know, I think it looks cool. I think I kind of experimented a little bit and went a little bit, well, not while not crazy as such, I, I think it works. So what I'm gonna do, as we usually do at this point, I'm gonna put it up for sale on the website, www.johnstarcart.com. Um, if you'd like to pick up a print of it, it'll be available in two sizes, A3 and A4, and two prices, uh, 75 and 45 euros. So if you like what I'm doing, if you'd like to support us and what we're making here and you want to go over to the website and pick yourself up a print that's www.johnstarcart.com then please do so very much appreciate thank you very much um in terms of this piece and when i did it because this was done in a bit of a transitional part of my life just moved to ireland moved over here because you know situation at home wasn't exactly the greatest and the change of environment while initially quite rocky as I think has done me the world of good. They say sometimes a change is better than a rest. And, you know, I think the change of environment, the change of the pace of life, you know, as much as I love London, and I do, I absolutely adore the place. You know, absence makes the heart grow fonder and all that. But I needed a change at the time. I needed a change in my life because things back home weren't great. You know, for a multitude of reasons that I'm not going to go into because it's no one's business. Coming over here, and the only thing I really had with me, I mean, it wasn't this iPad Pro, it was my old one, my old 9.7 inch. 
all I had really was to go out and do that or do a bit of photography, you know, to keep myself from going completely fucking mad because I didn't know anybody over here at the time. But obviously, over a period of time, things change. And, you know, I've made a lot of friends, found a collaborator in Roman, God bless your heart, sunshine. And here we are. Here I am sitting down talking to you about me creating my art and the processes involved and all that kind of stuff. Now, I appreciate, and this is probably something that, you know, up until now has been kind of lost on me, that not everybody has access to a 1500 euro tablet and stylus or whatever else made by one of the most, you know, profitable companies in world history, i.e. Apple. And that applies also to like, you know, Galaxy tablets and whatever else, the Google tablets, whatever tablets, you know, these are expensive pieces of kit. The one thing I would say, and I may have mentioned this before previously in a previous video, maybe very early on when we started this project, but this is not where you learn to draw. Where you learn to draw is with a bit a pencil and a bit of paper, and you keep doing it and doing it and doing it until you get good, you know? It's only then if you feel like you're being limited, then okay, change things up. I mean, do you need to spend money on the most expensive felt tip pens or the most expensive pencils or the most expensive coloring pencils or the most expensive anything for that matter to improve your art? What you gotta bear in mind when it comes to creativity of any kind, you have gotta start. It's only when you get to a certain level. Like for instance, even when I started photography, how did I start? I started with my iPhone 6. You know, I was going around taking photographs, whether I was in Ireland, whether I was in Paris, whether I was in Barcelona, where, wherever I was. That's how I started that. I started out by taking photos with what I had on me. And then over time, I got better cameras to the point where the camera I'm shooting on here now is my Canon EOS R. Now there are better cameras out there. Of course there are more recent cameras. It's not, the gear that makes you good. It's getting a tablet to learn how to draw is completely it's completely daft in my, my opinion. If you want to learn how to draw, pencil and paper and keep at it and at it and at it. I look at my nephew, right, who I drew the Wendigo for. If you don't remember, here it is here now. But he's drawing and drawing and drawing, you know. That's that it's that love of creativity that's been kindled in him. He's 11 years old. I mean, you wouldn't think it to look at him. He's bloody enormous. But the fact that he's drawing his monsters and drawing his mechas and drawing all these things that interest him, you know, and where that could possibly take him, that fills me with a huge amount of joy. But how is he learning how to do it? On scraps of paper, you know? And then eventually he's going to get to the point where those scraps of paper will have to become bigger. These pencils, have got to be, the, the pencils he uses are going to have to be better. The inks he uses are going to have to be better. The technology he uses is going to have to be better. He's going to he's going to go through that process where hopefully he's going to go through the, throughout that process through the entirety of his creative life. And I think if you look at my work or anyone's work for that matter, and that's something you want to emulate. If there's someone, someone's work that inspires you, then recreate it, copy it. Don't pass it off as your own work, because it's not. But copy it. Learn from it. And then over time, incorporate that into your own work, into your own characters, into, into your own art in general. And progress and progress and progress. Because when it comes down to it, like, it's that progression, that iterative improvement that will happen naturally over time will hopefully lead you to, um, to exploring creative avenues that you would not necessarily have anticipated. I mean, I don't want to turn around and say to anybody, there is a right way and a wrong way to do anything. But, the, but in terms of starting, it is just a case of starting and, what, and the easiest things that you have available to hand. And then 
improve and then get better. And then when you're being limited, get better equipment. You know, I think it's just I'm, what I'm really doing here is I'm reiterating something in terms of, and I've said this before, gear doesn't make you a great creative. You know, if you want to learn how to play guitar, get the cheapest guitar you can get your hands on, learn the basics. And then when you feel limited by that, then you get better guitars and then eventually get yourself a Gibson Les Paul or something along those lines. You know, if you're a photographer and you start off with your camera phone then you or you start off with, even with um, film cameras, I mean, film is still very much a relevant and vibrant art form where people creating amazing stuff in film. If it's a digital photography you want to get into, then start off with your phone. The thing that you have to hand, the thing that's available to you. And once you've got the basics and you feel limited by it, then get something else. If you want to do digital art, start off like I did. I started off on a smaller iPad. When I was limited by that, I got a bigger one. And I've had this one for five years. Because at this, even even now, even with better equipment out there, even with like iPads Pros with M2 chips in them, I'm not limited by what I have here. I still feel there's so much more I can do with this. And I'm, even recently, like I'm learning more as well, like in terms of using clipping masks, in terms of doing other, using other digital art techniques, I'm still learning. And then this thing still hasn't reached its potential as far as I'm concerned. The same applies with my photography and the cameras that I'm, we're using here to shoot. These are full frame cameras. Are they the best Canon cameras out there? No, they're not. There's much better ones available on the market, but I don't feel at this stage that I've reached my capability with the, the equipment that I have. So do I have any intention of upgrading it? Not right now and not for a while. So I don't know. I think the most important thing is that you create, if you want to learn how to create, learn the basics first and then keep progressing. And if you hit, if you feel you're being limited by what you're using, then upgrade to something else. And to keep doing that, and doing that, and doing that, and then share it with the world in whatever way you see fit. Anyway, my name has been John Clare. This has been John Starkheart. And as always, you have been very welcome. Till next time.